Final countdown. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. Dix, neuf, huit, sept, six, cinq, quatre, trois, deux, unité, top, allumage Vulcain. Allumage EAP, décollage. Beautiful pictures again of Arian coming roaring off the pad, leaving a trail of gold. I think we've lost her in the clouds. There she is. Did you see the cryo arms open at minus five? Did you count to seven? Tous les paramètres sont nominaux. Everything is on board is okay, says the DDO. At 18.36, local time and right on time, Arian began her mission, lifting off from the ground here in French Guiana, beginning her first mission of the year, rising into the clear skies over French Guiana, weighing 775 tons right now. She's burning five tons of fuel per second, if you can believe that, 2.5 tons in each booster, and the core stage burning an additional 300 kilograms of fuel per second. She is following the program in the onboard computer, which is located in the vehicle equipment bay below the satellites which gives all the orders, including stage separation. We'll, we'll soon begin to see those. We're in the first of four flight phases for area, and the first three are powered. The last is not. We'll describe each in turn uh, so you can follow area as she heads east across the Atlantic to separate the Tous passengers over the east coast of Africa and over the Indian Ocean. Flight phases are right now. The main engine and the two boosters are burning. Boosters will burn for another 20 seconds, roughly. Then the main engine will burn alone for about nine minutes. Then the upper stage will burn alone for about 16 minutes. And the final flight phase, not powered, we'll get back to that when it happens. Basically, we're using the simple solid propulsion in the boosters to get off the ground away from the pull of the earth and the more complex liquid propulsion cryogenics to ob obtain speed and performance. We're waiting for confirmation of the booster separation. You probably able to see that. Des d'accélération à poudre. There it is. The DDO has just called that. You can see the two boosters falling away, leaving their vapor trail. In the middle is the core stage area and continuing to burn. Nice shots. Tous les paramètres à bord sont nominaux. The boosters will fall 500 kilometers from shore in a protected area. Having done their job, we're now in the second powered flight phase, the main engine. La trajectoire burning est normale. We're coming up on separation of the fairing. Just before we do, take a look at the left hand side of your screen, the upper left, the cursor crawling up the line. That's actually two lines. One is superimposed on another, the optimum trajectory and the real-time trajectory, as long as they're one and the same, we're right where we should be. Below that, two lines, A and V. A is our altitude. You see we're climbing. V is our speed. We need between eight and nine kilometers per second to inject the satellites. De la coiffe. So watch the numbers. The DDO has just said that the fairing has been jettisoned. That's coming right on time. The f exposing Amazonas Trace. Now you can see the black and blue box on the right. The fairing protects the payload from shocks during Arian's ascent through the atmosphere. Tous les right. Once we luminous. leave the atmosphere at about 100 kilometers up, we don't need it anymore. And we can drop uh, the weight, which is about 500 kilos. The core stage, basically a big propellant tank with the engine. It uses cryogenic propellant. You've heard that word before. Cryogenics offer certain advantages over storable propellant, which is the other option, namely better performance. They can also be turned off and on, and its motors uh, can be reignited and can function longer. And we can see that with the upper stage, which is reignitable on the Ariane, and with the fourth stage called the frigate with the Soyuz. Ariane 1 to 4, previous uh, 
previous uh, models owed their success mainly to storable propellant, not cryogenics. There are fuels that are kept in ambient temperature and don't Tous evaporate nominaux, like cold uh, cryogenic does, and you saw that before liftoff with the constant topping up we needed. Storable propellant is also cheaper, but cryogenics offer better performance. You can see Amazonas exposed to the elements. Bef below that is a black bell-shaped structure. That's the silda, the carrying structure inside of which is our second passenger. Next up, the latest in a series of profiles of space professions here at the Space Base. My name is Guillaume Lozac, I'm 31, and I've been working for five years with Ariane Space as a launch site engineer. I've been living in Kuru for two years. I started with launch campaigns prior to looking after ground facilities after gaining experience and knowledge in relation to the needs of the launcher. In terms of the development of my career, after graduating as an aeronautics engineer, I started working on aircraft engines at Airbus, then in the US, and I came back to Europe, where I worked on the development of the ATV, the resupply spacecraft of the International Space Station. This first experience in the space industry made me want to join the teams of Ariane Space. My work time is split between operations in and out of the launch campaigns, where I am in charge of making sure that the various systems and methods are consistent. With Ariane 5, we put in place a set of methods that have been made it possible for us to deliver a first-in-class reliability, and we have applied these methods on Soyuz and Vega to achieve the same quality across our three launch systems. The role of an assistant at the launch center consists in making sure that facilities are available for the current campaign. And once the launcher has lifted up, our job is to prepare for the next campaign, whilst guaranteeing that all ground facilities are kept up to speed. Therefore, the ELA assistant team comprises three people. The assistant, who reports directly to the range operations director, and two specialists, one in electrical systems and one in mechanical and fluid systems, and the three of us guarantee the availability of ground facilities throughout the various steps of the launch campaign. As a result, during the launch campaign there is a very special phase referred to as the final countdown. This period starts at D-1 with the transfer of the launcher to its launch pad. And during this phase, we switch from our day-to-day -day scheduling with meetings from the launch center to an operational planning from the operations facilities, where the ground team will take turns in entering the coordinating function and piloting operations in real time so as to achieve an accurate H0 and liftoff in due course. What I enjoy as an operation engineer is that our job is hands-on. And as an assistant at KLA, I'm fortunate to be able to work with people from a wide variety of geographical origins and professional expertise, which is very valuable both personally and professionally. All is well on board Ariane 5. We are going to be picked up shortly by our first downrange tracking station over the border in Brazil, a place called Natal. Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Natal au Brésil. And we've just been picked up, as the DDO says. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground, whether by land or by sea. Ariane sends data back to the ground stations, and these data tell us how the flight is progressing in real time. The launcher is sending radar and telemetry back in a network of stations. Keep constant watch on her vital systems. The antenna pick up the signal and follow her progress. Telemetry, well, what is telemetry? It's uh, call it measuring from a distance. You see the tele, the Greek prefix, tele, like in television. There are over 1,500 parameters to measure, all indicators of Ariane's health in flight. We analyze some of these data in real time. Other are examined after the flight to find out how the vehicle has performed. They've recorded her motor ignitions, motor shutdown, stage separations, all of that. So you can imagine the enormous archive this means, giving Ariane Space an access to a wealth of technical information after over 200 flights of the... Ariane family. Coming up on the end of the lower stage burn, there are three orders given by the onboard computer. De there we just got confirmation by the DDO. Three orders given by the onboard computer in about 12 seconds. Extinction of the lower stage. De de and separation of the lower stage. And then ignition 
of the upper stage. So we're now in the third and final powered flight phase. Second stage is burning on a single engine, like the first stage. It carries a lot less fuel, though. 12 tons of liquid oxygen and 2.5 and tons of liquid hydrogen. It'll burn in 16 minutes. The first stage carried 175 tons. 